Yo, what is up? Welcome back to another stream right here on Free Will Photos. Today, what we're going to be looking at is moving from On One into Silver Effects Pro 3. Now, this is going to be more of a black and white processing thing. So if you're not into processing black and whites, then maybe this isn't for you. Uh, but what we're going to look at is how do we move from on one, uh, assuming that you're shooting in raw, and then you want to go into one of these third party applications such as silver effects. So you can really fine tune. Um, we're also going to look at why you would leave on one to go over to silver effects. Uh, and then, uh, we'll, we'll wrap this up with a few different items inside of, uh, on one, you know, the pros and cons stuff like that. Now, before we get too far into the stream, if you are just now tuning in, uh, welcome. My name's Chris. I'm the content creator here at Free Will Photos. I do have an email list. I have not been very active on the email list, but I promise you I'm working on presets and the people on the email list, they get those presets first. So if you look in the uh, description box below, there should be a link for you to sign up for the email list completely free. All I need is your email address. I'll send you a link when all of these presets are good to go. So let's just go ahead and dive right into the computer, uh, which is right here. So here we are inside of on one. And as you can see, I have a album that I'm using to kind of guide me through this, uh, this, I guess, tutorial lesson. I don't know. Uh, most of which, most of what I'm about to, t uh, talk to you guys about today, there we go, fix my camera, make sure that I'm, uh, actually in the camera. All right. Most of what I'm going to talk to you guys about today, uh, is really just my workflow of how I get from color images to black and white images. Um, and we can dis disregard the photos of our awesome dog waffles, but what we're going to look at is this guitar, which is hanging up on the wall behind me. Um, and then I have back to school photos that I took of my kids this week, or I guess last week, it was on Sunday last week. Um, and then some landscape esque type images. I'm not a landscape photographer. Uh, that was really just, I was in the area. I had my camera. Why not practice and, and take some photos? So. Let's go ahead and look at the guitar first. Now, as you can see, this photo is already converted to black and white. And you can see there's a lot of dust on the guitar, uh, mostly because I don't actually play uh, the guitar. I can play the guitar. I'm just not very good at it. So we'll leave that at that. All right. We'll leave that alone. But what what you can see is it's already converted into black and white now i shot these photos a little while ago uh, i want to say earlier this year yeah back in january i shot these photos in january they were tethered and i was using a preset that i already had which is just some dynamic contrast and a black and white filter already applied so if i were to turn off all of those this is what the image would have looked like had I not entered the preset. All right. Now, the reason why I'm covering this is because sometimes it really does matter if you're using a preset or not. Presets can really help you visualize what it is that you want to do. And what I did when I was shooting tethered is I shot the first image. I came into the effects module and I started manipulating the black and white. I didn't add a tone curve and really I didn't do much of anything all other than come in here and manipulating the tones a little bit, but I didn't do anything with the color response, uh, mostly because the lighting kept changing and I didn't know what I wanted that to do. Here, let me get you. There we go. Now you can see the, the full screen. So what I did instead, is I left the color response alone and I'm just going to edit those, you know, as I see fit. But what I did add was dynamic contrast. Now, if I were to turn this off, you can see the image is soft. That could be what you're going for. 
I was not going for that. I wanted something that was a little bit more crisp, a little bit more edgy, and you know, you can add in some grunge. So I'm getting into the the pros of why you would use, you know, and maybe we'll bring up the brightness. Because I don't like I don't want this image to be dark. I, I actually went out of my way to make sure that I had uh enough lighting. So and then you know you can grunge it up and I want to brighten it up. And maybe even throw some detail in there. You know, so now I'm getting like this really, really crispy photo. Uh, I probably would not print this uh, with this much on there. But you, you get the point, right? You can add in effects here in On One Photo Raw, which is outstanding. Now, I don't want a grunge filter because if I turn this off and on, it adds in more contrast back there darkens down some of this area and you know the focal point was right in here you can see this is the the area that was the most sharp and I was shooting at f8 so I had a pretty decent depth of field and this was shot with a macro lens a 100 millimeter uh, Tokina 2.8 macro lens now I'm going to go ahead and close that out what we're going to do is mess around with getting the colors the way that I want them to be. Now, I don't want to make this too much about a black and white tutorial uh, because we do want to get into the third party. But I want to show the difference of using the color response here. And then when we go into silver effects, how the color response actually acts. All right. So with that being said, what I'm going to do is take the little color picker and I want this to be just a little bit brighter, right? So I'm going to drag this until I start to see that. Yeah, there we go. So now it's brightening up a little bit. And then when I drop it, uh, I can see what the final result looks like. And this was all in the red tone, right? Or red color. Uh, so it just brightened up the reds in this image or in this section. Now, I feel like maybe somewhere, yeah, the yellows, they're like underneath, they're, they're a very faint tone. There's not too much color in this image uh, because it's mostly just a, it's a uh, burgundy, I don't know, it, lots of reds, all right, we'll just put it like that. There's lots of reds in here. Um, but we see that the strings have a little bit of yellow. So is this affecting the strings? Yeah. And so uh, the strings are getting a little bit darker, but I really want those to pop. Now, there's ways that I can make this happen. I can make the strings pop by adding in a mask. Um, but or I can do this. I can go add filter uh, color adjustment. We'll put the color adjustment underneath the black and white filter, and then we'll go to the yellows and we will make them brighter. And you can see it is increasing the yellows in these strings. So if I were to turn off this black and white adjustment and turn off this color adjustment, it's not doing a whole lot. It's really only getting right there. So maybe my range needs to come up. And let's see. So yeah, now it's really targeting those strings. Okay. So that's with it off and that's with it on, right? So now I can convert this back to black and white and I can really see, okay, yeah, that's going to make my strings pop. And now maybe I want to contrast this, right? So before I was thinking this needs to be brighter, knowing that it's mostly reds, I can come in here and say, you know what? I actually want this to be more of a darker red right so now and we'll even bring our yellows up so now there's a little bit more separation between the two okay 
that's the benefit of using on one you have a full range of tools and filters at your disposal you can put as many of these as your computer can handle the processing for you can mask and do all that good stuff but on top of that you also have your develop settings right now i did not develop this photo um when i was photographing it uh, and so i could absolutely come in here and develop it you got your color or, or i'm sorry not your color profiles your camera profiles all right so if I wanted this to be really edgy, I could go landscape or maybe even vivid. Um, if I want this to be a little bit lighter and softer, I could go portrait. If I want to go neutral with it and, you know, just kind of make it flat, I can go this way. And then, of course, there's linear raw, which makes it dark, uh, but it really does give you a lot of wiggle room um, for editing. But I'm going to leave it on standard for today's purposes. Now, you can come through here and do all kinds of stuff. Uh, I do recommend that you, at a minimum, develop your photo inside of On One Photo Raw, especially if you're shooting a raw photo, uh, because that's one of the pro or one of the cons to going into Silver Effects. You don't have these raw conversion filters. So get a good base exposure before you decide to go into Silver Effects. Uh, which is what we're going to do. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and hit done on this. And then we will create a version. And then I'm going to send that version into Silver Effects. So create a version. And then on the version, I am going to reset. Wherever reset is, there it is at the top. Reset, this is gonna come back to a color image. We'll go into edit. And now we will edit this image, uh, not converting it to black and white inside of On1, but preparing it for a black and white conversion inside of Silver Effects. And then we'll bring the, the edited version back and take a look at the two. So this is where my focal point is going to be in the image or already is so everything else is really just plain in support i think most people would look at this and say oh yeah that's a guitar um so what i'm going to do is i don't like to mess with my black or my white point when i'm exposing an image that i know i'm going to send off to on or i'm sorry silver effects for black and white uh, and that's just a personal preference I don't like doing that because if I add too much information, I won't have as much wiggle room when I'm doing the black and white conversion. So instead, what I like to do is I like to open my shadows and then really move my midtones around until I get a nice bright image, right? Uh, and then maybe even mess around with my highlights so I can recover some of the, the highlight detail because when I do my black and white conversion, I'm going to bring the blacks down and it's really gonna separate and make this contrasty look, right? So I might even bring down the exposure here and I can always bring that up a little bit later. But this is the way that I would develop the image knowing that I'm going to make this a black and white photo going into silver effects, all right? So now that I know that, I'm going to leave and you can mess with the temperature, color. You can even change your camera profile. Uh, for today, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and hit done. And then I am going to right click on this and create, uh, right click on it and send it into Silver Effects. All right. So right click and we want to go into Silver Effects Pro 3. Now, hopefully, I don't run into the issues that I had last uh, last week with trying to get into third party applications from on one. Um, actually quick pause. I seen a really cool sneak peek on YouTube earlier this week. They're going to make plugins available for on one for raw. So maybe we won't have to do this, uh, export to TIFF to get it into on one or silver effects. So I'm excited to see that I did vote for that on the, uh, form a few months back when they asked 
is that value added? And I think it is. So, um, especially if you're coming from Lightroom and you're used to being able to edit an image and then bring it back into Lightroom, it should be the same way here, or at least it would be nice for it to be. Uh, nonetheless, edit a copy with settings applied. Yes, I want to do that. TIFF with no layers. And then the color space, we can leave it at sRGB. And then resolution 300, 16 bit, all that good stuff. No issues. Let's hit edit. Get this into Silver Effects Pro. And while it does that, I'm going to get a sip of my coffee. Okay. All right. Well, I'll install this later. And yeah, I get it. If I use a TIFF, I can always come back for editing later. All right. So here we are. There's. Yep. All right. We're going to leave that alone. Um, we don't want to hit apply on this just yet because. I haven't done any edits, but you get a nice little banner down here that just says, hey, you know, you're editing a guitar shot uh, or whatever from on one foot of raw. The answer to that is yes, I know. Now, the cool thing about silver effects, if you're not familiar with it, is it does come with some presets and the 25th anniversary. There's I'm sorry, there's some pretty cool stuff here. Um, sure. Yeah. Let me continue. I want to see the preset. Now, if I wanted to go with something a little bit more edgy, then I can go with this. And, you know, this gets me started. This gets me in the ballpark, gets me going. Uh, but maybe I want to go something a little bit more vintage. You know, I, I use the presets here and I do leave the, uh, the alert on because sometimes I may not actually want to uh, use a preset and then I click on it by accident because I'm just being, you know, extra fast and uh, then it messes up my settings that I've applied over here. So, yes, I do make it a uh, double opt in to change the preset. You don't have to do that. I do recommend you come up with some way of safeguarding your work. But, um, you know, there's some really cool presets. I think most of you are familiar with how presets work and, you know, even with this antique one, this could be a good look depending on what I'm trying to do with the image. Now for today, and there's Mr. Waffles in the background, uh, for today, we're going to go with a more modern approach, right? And I really like the way that this looks. Now, here's the deal. Silver Effects Pro has different tools, which means it's going to give you a different aesthetic. It's going to give you a different look when you go and you start capturing, um, you know, different aspects of or editing different aspects of the, um, the photo which is why you may want to come into silver effects as opposed to going in or staying inside of on one. Now, once I get a preset, I like to come over here and mess around and see if I can really dive into what it is that I want. And then I'll even start adding control points, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. But the first thing that I want to do is get the global adjustments of the brightness down. Now, for me, this is a little too bright. So I'm just going to bring down the brightness. If I can bring down the brightness. Yeah, there we go. That's a little too much down. And I like to look at the luminance on the histogram here uh, because this lets me know if I'm actually hitting the right point, right? Uh, and then where I really like to come in is bringing down my shadows. Come on. And that's because I don't need as much detail in the shadow 
personally. It's just a personal preference. Uh, and then turning it off and on to see what the global adjustments look like. Because uh, that's all of these adjustments, not just up here. But, you know, it really does help to do that. Now, uh, amplifying the blacks and the whites. Now, remember I said that I don't touch the blacks and the whites in my raw conversion or my raw processing. It's because I do that in here. And this preset already had a good amount. If I were to double click that and reset it, you can see there's not very much. And then I just pull it up until I get to a point where I'm like, yeah, that looks good. And I do say that. Uh, and I think this is about where I would want it to be for my own personal taste. Again, this is all to personal taste. Now, I'm not going to mess with any of the structure adjustments because I'm actually going to do that inside of a control point uh, because there are some areas of the image that I want to make less contrasty and less, less, less structurally sound. All right. Um, and then I'm not worried about the tonality protection. I think this is fine. Uh, you know, I'm trying not to make this a tutorial on silver effects, but more so showing off the capability that it has. Um, now, one of the cool things is the zones. Now, if you're familiar with uh, Anzel Adams, I don't know if he created the zone theory or not, but whatever. Someone created the zone theory. And what this means is whenever you make a black and white image, you should have representation in each of the zones. And if you don't, then you're probably missing something in the tonal range. So what I like to do is just hover over this to see where I'm at uh, in the tonal ranges. And, you know, I don't have very much representation in the number nine zone, which is the brighter highlights. So maybe I need to tone those up a little bit. And then I have no representation in 10, which is pure white, which I'm okay with it. You know, it's not like a hard and uh, fact that you have to have that. Um, and maybe I can fix that by amplifying my whites. If I can click the slider here. And then let's see what happened. Uh, I got a little bit more in the nine and still no representation in the 10, which I'm okay with. I think I can work with that, right? Not having something in zone 10, I don't think is going to hurt me too much. Uh, I'm just going to roll with it, all right? Roll with it. But now we get down to these control points. So by clicking on the control point, I can come over here and I want to set a control point right here on this little item. Now to make sure that I, I don't know what this is called, right? Uh, I probably should, but I'm just going to say this little item. If you know what it's called, leave it in the comment section below. Now, when you put down a control point, if you want to see what that control point is doing, you can come over here and click the show hide selection control point and what it's doing is really highlighting all of this area. Uh, like what's what's in white is going to receive the effect. And what's not in white is not going to receive the effect. So what I can do, because I just want to focus in on this particular area. What I can do is click, drag that in. And then <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. There we go. Takes a little while sometimes for, uh, for some reason, and I'm sure there, there's a good reason for it. And now with the control point selected, you have to scroll down here. Uh, they're not on the screen anymore. If you're used to using, uh, the Nick collection control points, they used to be on the screen where you can click and drag and, and do all that. But what you do now is come over here to the right hand side. And as you can see, I'm on control point one 
And I'm actually going to rename this to prong one. Just makes it easier when I start adding more control points to know what is going on. Now, color selectivity, all right? Luminance is going to adjust. Oh, I guess it's not doing much of anything. We'll just go ahead and reset that. Go back to zero, you. All right, there we go, 50%. All right, so what I want to do is adjust the structure. I'm going to pull that up a little bit. And you'll start to see this is really starting to pop <clears throat> in the image, uh, which is good because that's what I wanted to do. And then we'll go ahead and throw in some fine structure here. And we'll even throw in a little bit of contrast. All right. Now, you know, you got to turn them off and on to see if it's actually doing something that you want it to do. And I think that's working. Yeah, I think I can work with that. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and think I can right click this. Nope. I think it's over here. One of these allows you to duplicate. There it is. So now I can duplicate it and then I can just pull this over to that particular item or prong and we'll just label this one prong two. Okay. Now that's all fine and dandy. I think that that could work and you can see how you do all these localized adjustments and I got more examples, so I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on just one image, but you can see what happens when you do that, right? You can build a ton of uh, different ways and then you can do a preset. All of this comes down to what is your overall, uh, like what is your level of comfortability on some of these things? Now, what I'm going to do, and I don't know why this doesn't like to respond when I use my scroll wheel sometimes, but what I'm going to do is come down here to, not the color filter, maybe it is the color filter. No, I don't want the color filter. Hmm. I haven't used Silver Effects Pro 3 uh, in the previous version of Silver Effects. You used to be able to um, adjust the color response. Here we go. It's inside of film types. Why it's inside of film types, I'm not sure. I'm not a black and white artist like that. So, all right. Nonetheless, here it is. The HSL or, you know, all your color uh, selections. Now, we remember from earlier, this is in the red tonal range. So maybe if we pull down on our reds, we should start to see. There we go. It takes a minute. Makes you feel like it's not doing anything. Um... So now we're getting more of that contrast in the image, uh, the way that I would like it to be. And this works very similar, uh, probably a little bit better than what's inside of on one. The difference here, however, though, is when you use this, it is more fine tuned. Now in, uh, on one, you can add in more filters here. You only have this, this one filter that you can add it on with and what you get is what you get, right? There's no stacking multiple black and white filters or other color adjustment or enhancers. Um, this is just what you get. Now, one of the things that people like to do, uh, is make like this flattened image. 
because that's always fun in black and white I think and I'm just gonna make this really now if you're going to do a tone curve adjustment I do recommend doing it inside of here just because if I say you know what I don't like this point I can just delete it no not the control point I want to want to delete this you double click that's what it is all right so if you don't like it you just double click and it goes away uh, which I don't like that so get that out of there now why does my photo look all weird now something happened oh well so Again, you get the point. I'm not going to uh, continue beating the drum. So once you're done, you hit apply and it is going to apply your settings. Now, because this is a TIFF image, I can always come back and re-edit the photo um, inside of Silver Effects. But when I get back into on one, and if I remember correctly, it's not going to actually put it into my album. This is just a, a challenge with on one. If you're working in an album, uh, the version of the edited image actually goes back to the original photo or folder. Um, where is it? Macro photos. Not that one. Guitar macros. We'll go there real quick. And... I just need to find the TIFF. Once I find it, I'm just going to drag it back into. No. Nope, I don't have a filter on. It's weird. <clears throat> I don't know why this doesn't have the adjustment on it. You know, sometimes there's just weird stuff that happens because I believe this is the photo. Because that's the only TIFF photo that we've made and it should have the adjustments applied to it. It's very disappointing. Okay. Well, let's go back to third-party applications. And, yeah, that would have been it. 51, version 1. Oh, well. I'm sorry that that happened. Man. But whenever they fix the problem uh, with plugins inside of on one I think we'll be a lot better. So... Let's go ahead and edit this photo. Now this photo uh, in black and white, I think it will work just fine. I've already done the basic uh, developing, develop options or settings or whatever. Um, so now all we have to do is come into the effects tab and we can click add a filter. And of course we can do the black and white adjustment. Now. Whenever you work inside of Volume One Photo Raw, I always, always recommend that you throw a color adjustment underneath the black and white filter. And the reason for that is if you need more luminance in a color, or if you need a color to be a little bit more saturated so the black and white filter can pick it up, then this helps out a lot. All right. So I, I typically just leave that alone and then I come over here. And you can hit auto uh, tone response and see what it does to the image. I don't think that that's too bad. Um, I don't think it's bad at all. But compared to what you can get out of a preset, and there are some presets in here. 
Right. So you can go through and that's not a very flattering preset uh, for portraits. And I do actually have a black and white portrait preset. Um, so, but I'm not using that today because I want to uh, go through the comparison between on one photo raw and silver effects pro. So I can go with neutral. Now my favorite preset is accurate black and white. And this is just the conversion that was used many, many years ago to convert color into black and white. And it gives you a accurate representation of what the TV would have seen if this was converted universally into black and white. Now, what you're, why it looks so flat and washed out is because I haven't adjusted any of the tones. So if we were to hit auto tone, now it gets a little bit more contrasty and you know, you, you're like, oh, okay, I could see that. Uh, so maybe we'll open up the shadows just a little bit more because we're missing some detail in our hair here. And this is where you can even come in, grab a local adjustment and I'll reset here and grab my shadows, maybe even brighten it a little bit. Let's go ahead and make that a little bit smaller. And I do have a low flow. And all I'm doing is painting that in. It looks terrible right now. We'll go ahead and put the exposure back to zero. See if that fixes it. And then maybe even bring the shadows down because there was just too much. Right? And I can paint back inside of there. And maybe even lift the blacks on it just to make the hair shine. That's all I'm looking for here is adding in detail and highlight into her hair because that adds in a little bit of uh, dynamic or dimension. So there is her hair good to go and I can come back over here to the effects tab and continue uh, editing as necessary. Now the back here is way too bright and this is where those color adjustments come in right or the color adjustment I can and this background if I remember correctly is mostly green yep so the greens typically have yellows in it and it's just too bright so I'm gonna darken it down come over to the yellow tab and guess what I'm gonna darken that down as well now, if for whatever reason, I'm like, hey, you know what? Uh, it's affecting the skin because we can turn it off and turn it back on. Looks like it's actually not affecting the skin, but let's pretend it was, all right? Because sometimes you make color adjustments and you make them very broad and generally, and then out of nowhere, the skin gets affected. Well, what you can do is you can add a mask and just paint away the areas that you don't want your adjustment on, right? So if I hit O, you can see that I've blocked out the adjustment on her arm there. Now, this particular adjustment didn't cause any issues, uh, so I can, I can work with that, right? So now what I want to do I'm just going to reset that mask because it's not really affecting anything. Now what I want to do is work on darkening this area so we're led into her, right? Well, I mean, this is actually very easy. You grab an adjustment, you get your masking bug, and you drop a gradient, which it's already set there. I'll drag it up and I'll 
fade this a little bit better. And now that's done, right? The focus goes right into her. And what I really enjoy about editing black and whites inside of on one versus anywhere else is you just have all of these available tools, right? So now I'm going to do the magic eye fixer. This is just a standard preset inside of on one. Let's zoom in a little bit and make that a little bit smaller. Make sure that we're on paint in. My flow is still at 51 and make it a little bit smaller. And we're just going to paint right over the eyes. And it looks like it's really strong. We'll see how strong it is when we back off of here. Let's go back to regular size. And her eyes do look a little too bright. So what we're going to do is bring the exposure piece down just a little bit more. And I think that looks about right. So let's turn it off. And turn it back on. Yeah. And it just helps the eyes pop, right? This is just basic editing of a portrait. Let me get a sip of coffee. Okay. So now, one of the other things, and you know, I'm just showing you the benefits of being able to edit black and white photos inside of On One uh, and the ease of it, right? So. Let's just eye enhancer. We'll minimize that. And it's always a good idea to clean up and tidy your, your areas here, but you get the point. I'm not going to do that for the sake of not wasting time. Now, you could come in here and soften skin, uh, which is probably better done in portrait AI. I'm not going to do that today. Uh, what I will do, however, is I will increase the contrast on her eyebrows because I think that there's some value added in doing that. So we'll go ahead and I will reset that. And we'll go with contrast, okay? And all I'm gonna do here is just paint over her eyebrows. Okay. And then maybe even add in a little bit of contrast, darkening her uh, hairline. because it really just helps tie things together. And yeah, there's already some structure in it. So we'll see what that looks like off and on. This one is probably way too strong, so I'll probably end up deleting that. Uh, Yeah, this one's a little too much contrast for me. So, Shift X, we'll make a bigger bracket and just delete that. So, now it is gone. Uh, underneath here is a little bit dark. So, grab another adjustment brush, open up the shadows lift the blacks and this one I think I'm gonna go with a lower opacity maybe like 43 because I don't need a full effect of this because I do like the contrast that uh, we get but it just needs to be opened up a little bit especially right around this area and I'll go one more pass under her neck here. And yeah, you see how that's just softening up her her area. It's just adding in a little bit. It's very subtle. 
I don't know if it's actually going to come through with all the compression on YouTube, but uh, it is very obvious for me. Um, uh, it's subtle, but it's obvious. Then the last thing that I think I'll, I'll work on is her hands here. Her hands are extremely bright, and I don't think they need to be. So I'm going to click on my masking bug, drop down. We'll go with vignette. We'll click there and we'll make a edges adjustment and we're just going to make this smaller All right because it doesn't need to be all over the place and we'll make it longer put it right there put it over the hands and then what I'm going to do is bring the exposure down by a third stop and that's already bringing back some information and then I'll just bring down the highlights and truthfully her hands don't have to be overly in focus so I'm gonna bring down the structure as well so now they're not as bright as they used to be right tone down the brightness on them and they're also not as sharp as they used to be, so, uh, or as in focus, because the focus really should be right here on her. Now, we'll add one final adjustment. And this adjustment is going to be the one that um, my vignette, I really, I really enjoy doing vignettes in this fashion. Now, there was a, uh, a subscriber to the channel who suggested after you make the vignette to take the brush, and I can't remember who this was. Uh, I do like this diagonal vignette. Um, that's one of my, my favorite ways of, of doing it. But what he said is, you take the brush and I probably will leave this one. I'm just going to demonstrate the brush concept uh, and then lower the opacity and just click around. Oh, doing it the wrong way. I need to be erasing the vignette. So that way it's a lot more natural. And I think this happens more so when you're doing something and you're like not uh, you have very harsh edges or really dark burned uh, portions of the image I don't have that in this one uh, this one is actually pretty straightforward and then I think I am just I'm pretty much done and I can leave that uh, the the paint marks you know and just so you get an idea you can see the vignette i can even come over here and we're just fading it away in different areas so now when you look at the image you can't really tell but you can almost sense the fact that you're being drawn in to her all right so that's one of my favorite ways of doing this. I'm going to go ahead and hit done because I think we're done with this image. And then uh, I wanted to show you this alongside a version from Silver Effects, but for whatever reason, Silver Effects is, uh, it's not, it didn't, render the last one so i'm going to send a tiff version of this into silver effects and then we'll see if i can grab it so we'll just go ahead and click on send to silver effects with layers edit uh, a copy with settings applied we'll go ahead and hit edit and we'll try and get these side by side because I think the side-by-side -side comparison 
inside of on one versus silver effects and this time i'm going to go really fast inside of silver effects so uh, if you got questions then please go ahead and drop those in the comment section because i want to be able to help out and answer questions as much as possible appreciate you guys hanging out and you know just chilling with me this morning as i go through some editing uh which this is work that i was supposed to be doing anyway uh and so on that last image you actually followed me through a typical workflow of what i do whenever i edit an image for my uh for myself or for clients which i haven't had uh in a, a little while now so there's that i guess i i've had my my daughter as a client uh or my wife I don't know it was back to school photos so here we are inside of silver effects and I think I want to go with something that's a smooth full dynamic smooth let me let me try that one let's see what this does we'll go ahead and click come on there we go let's see what full dynamic smooth brings to the table uh didn't seem to really do anything that speaks out to me now sometimes i do go for these more bright images i don't like the border you can get rid of the border and the finishing adjustments i think is where it's at uh and then image border i can just get rid of it Man, just work with me. Come on. Come on. You can do a computer. It does not want to work with me today. Turn off the border. I don't want the border. Man. I don't know why. Why do you keep reverting back? You're telling me that you're turning off. Come on. There we go. I'll make my borders later. <laughs> um, anyhow, now we have this image and it doesn't have as much contrast as I would like it to have. So I would personally just come in here and probably work inside the levels, do a basic S curve and see where that goes. Maybe that's too much contrast now. So maybe I shouldn't do an S curve, maybe a, a very, very small S curve. Uh, yeah, and you know, I would just go through here, make my adjustments as I seen fit. Uh, and then from there, I would, now her face is really, really bright. You can fix this with control points. Control points, selective adjustments, grab a control point. I can drop it right there. Now, what I need to do is just make sure that I'm selecting mostly the area in which, I, yeah, that's mostly the brighter areas. I'll go about that big. And we'll go ahead, click here, and then I'm just going to bring down the brightness and you'll see. Bring down the brightness. contrast and so now I have an image where she is not overly bright and I'll even control the highlights maybe that's the better way controlling the highlights it just takes a while and I don't know if it's because I'm streaming that it's taking longer or because it's just taking longer but as you can see her face is not overly exposed as it once was i can hit apply now hopefully this time this is photo 128 uh hopefully this time when the settings get applied to the image it actually shows up inside of on one and maybe you know now that i think about it on one has this weird thing where you kind of have to recycle the folder. So I am going to click on 
I'm going to go back to, you know what? One of these is a show reveal in folders. There we go. And then somewhere in here should be the copy. Now, these are all of the photos. And here it is. This is the TIFF. In theory, this photo should be the black and white, but it is not. Because for some reason, it just doesn't want to cooperate with me. So if I copy this and drop it into the applications folder or the third party applications, there's the TIFF, but Nope. I don't know why it's not showing the uh, the finished version of Silver Effect. So if anyone knows of this issue or how to solve this problem, please let me know because I would greatly appreciate it. I would greatly appreciate it. Man. It's like the third party applications don't want to work with me today. Hopefully with the release of On One Photo Raw 22. Uh, this issue will be resolved because we'll have access to more information or like plugins. So hopefully that'll be resolved. Well, that was, uh, you know, I still got some work to do on editing the photos, but hopefully this helps show you you know, not the, it wasn't the best verses. Uh, it wasn't like the, the Duke out between the two programs, but there are some pros and cons, right? The pros of using all one photo raw is you don't have to leave a third party application or leave to another application, which then, uh, allows you to edit your image right there in front of you. Um, and then go for it, right? The downside to using all in photo raw is there are some really cool presets and adjustments that to mimic inside of on one may be a little bit challenging. So it's a little bit better uh, to have that preset available and then go and make the adjustment and the tweak. And then the cool thing is you can save those. Um, now, the benefit of editing inside of Alma Photo Raw is you have all of the tools that you need to really fine tune an image. Uh, as you've seen with the portrait, I was able to make selective adjustments or localized adjustments really easily. Uh, and they were very fine tuned and the photo came out great. If you're going for black and white, black and white, wow, a black and white aesthetic. Uh, I think that that's probably one of the, the best ways of getting it. So hopefully, you know, this, this was a little bit of a help. And if you're watching this on a uh, replay or restream or, you know, just as a video on YouTube, I want to appreciate uh, your participation and, you know, just support to the channel and to the overall video. So until the next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.